everybody, um, Amanda here again. <laughs> um, thank you um, for following me if you have done so far. And I'm at 100 subscribers, yay! Um, really, really good, thank you so much. Um, I hope to bring more content for you, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm um, a reseller, so which means I go around Facebook Marketplace, um, Car Boot, uh, Charity Shops, um, Jumble Trails in the Summer anywhere I can do to actually pick things up and make a profit. Um, particularly interested in vintage, so vintage toys, um, vintage figures, um, and also I am starting to do a live as well on a Sunday um, at 9.30, um, just after Nick and Andrew Hills actually, on the resales community for people, for people that are not on the resales community, you need to get on there because it's absolutely brilliant. A uh, guy called Night's Life, um, and you need to go and follow him as well because he's fantastic um, he's brilliant and you're going to call everyone else as well so nice life follows everybody so everyone can follow each other um, and let's grow this community because it's an absolutely fantastic community um, but I thought I'd just pop on because I sold quite a bit of uh, stuff over the um, weekend now not of it's all great money but um, as I'll go through at the end of the day money's money isn't it bread and butter at the end of the day do you know what I mean um, and also, if it is a, a 99p order, which I think I've got one or two, um, hey ho, somebody gets joy enjoyment out of it. I always put a pound in the pot. So yeah, so happy days. So yeah, so without further ado, um, I will get on to what I sold. Hi, yeah, if you could like just here, subscribe just here, and hit the notification bell just here, that would be fantastic. Um, and yeah, and now I will show you what has sold. So, I sold 11 things over the weekend. Um, one was clothing and the rest were some collectibles um, and some bags and things like that. So, I thought I would save the best till last, um, but I will show you what sold. Um, and how much I sold it for and what I bought it for. Hi, so um, my first sale um, of the weekend was some doll's house furniture. Now, a little bit of history about doll's houses. In the 16th century in Holland, Germany and England, um, the earliest known doll's houses appeared. Um, there were houses that like were display cabinets um, made up of rooms. Um, the first doll's house in Europe was constructed in 1558 in Germany and the Duke of Albrecht v of Bavaria acquired it for his daughter. Um, because of their, their uh, grand looking, um, it eventually made its way into the Duke's private art collection. Um, so the first doll's house was obviously richly decorated with wooden floors, expensive silk fabrics, um, obviously silver and miniature furniture, a fine woods and ivory, um, had a little tiny cellar as well filled with little wine bottles and contained real wine. Um, but unfortunately it was destroyed in a fire in uh, 1647 um, but the Duke's obviously records of the house gives an insight of what it was like so so that's really where doll's houses um, first started off which was obviously quite a few hundred years ago. Um, and they've all they've been popular ever since. Um, Doll's houses, uh, I had one as a little girl actually as well. Um, my my great grandfather, um, he built it for me. Um, he was a lovely man. Um, I always remember it was like Tudor and it was like uh, black and white. Um, and unfortunately, um, we had a flood in 1981 because my mum and dad actually kept it in my um, shed in the garden and um, the house got flooded, completely flooded, from the river uh, where I used to live and um, it washed my doll's house away because I was going to keep it. I wanted to keep it for obviously for my for my children. Um, so yeah, so I was like quite upset about that. But anyway, so yeah, so I sold some doll's house furniture. So um, I only picked it up for £3, this doll's house furniture, in a local charity shop. Um, and actually it's really good because um it's got like 
the little wooden ones so that's quite cute um so that's going to go off today then you've got these tiny tiny little plates and sauces aren't they cute really cute picture frame and a light as well um we've got this is lovely as well it's like a little toy box so it's wooden so that's cute um so we've got that another mirror a little umbrella <laughs> um this is like a screen you see that screen there like a little screen like one of those dressing screens that's quite cute as well a lot of these come in boxes as well so that's quite nice as well um i'm not going to get this one out but you can see that's one of those welsh dresses so that's lovely as well um and we've got another chest of drawers sort of like a queen anne looking chest of drawers i think that is but isn't it lovely it's beautiful and we have some windows and doors and some different flooring and little facilities with the old ones do you remember the old facility ones the toilets they used to have the like little chains <laughs> hanging right up at the top <laughs> so yeah so we've got that as well and then you can just see here I'll just show you quickly I won't get it all out but you can just see there's the part of the flooring bit here um, and there's some stickers there for I think they're roof tile stickers there so I think it must have come out and there's some another tile flooring bit there as well so I think it must have come out of some sort of doll's house, sort of like, um, you know you can get those subscription magazines, can't you? I don't know how old subscription magazine it is, but um, yeah, so pay £3 for that and I sold it for 22 which also is bread and butter item, but hey ho. It's all profit at the end of the day, isn't it? So, yeah. So that will go off today. And that's a big, large bundle of doll's house furniture. So the next item that um, I actually sold was this. So it's velvet. It's like a velvet sort of feel. And it's got really intricate sort of like peacock feathers on it these are all beads as well so it's beaded as well all the way around um, it's a beautiful looking bag and it's by a guy called uh, Matthew Williamson the butterfly collection I don't know whether you've heard of him at all and um, he's an award-winning um, British interior designer as well so he does like um, fur like furniture uh, walls, uh, things for the home as well, um, and he loves colour, so anything like colour, um, patterns as well, um, you know, he was in Vogue, um, he grew up in the 1970s in Manchester, um, and he has a passion for like colour and aesthetics, so he's really, really um, popular with a lot of um, people. Um, he... Um, he does some really good designs so i picked this one up actually when i was in near manchester believe it or not <laughs> so funny that he's from manchester and i picked it up near manchester um but yeah but an absolutely lovely design um it always has like a little butterfly on it as well for the butterfly collection handbag so if you ever see that at all that one there and yeah so don't walk on by because they do come out some good money. As I say, I paid £3 for this and I sold it for £25. So, which is a good, 
good purchase. So yeah, again, bread and butter item you might say, but it all adds up. So yeah, so that's a great find as well. So I'll be posting that one out today. Let's say that's Matthew Williamson, British interior designer. So design these bags. So yeah, so um, my next one that I sold were these little figures. So they're like Funko pop vinyl figures. They're all Games of Thrones. So he's Games of Thrones. And he's a two Jon Snow, which are different one than Games of Thrones. I don't actually have ever watched Games of Thrones. So um, just a bit of history as well about them. Was um, they began in 1998. Um, and Mike Becker found a little company with a nostalgia themed bobble headline called Wacky Wobblers. So the first item the company ever created was the big boy bobblehead. So I presume that he's quite rare to find now. Um, over time, this once small company became a huge obsession with collecting and pop and culture enthusiasts worldwide. So yes, yeah, so the Funko history is like amazing. And also if you can get some really early ones as well, you can come out some really good money for them. But I sold these guys, they were a pound each. And I sold all three of them together. And I got 15 for them. So yeah, again, not a huge amount but all adds up and I was quite happy with that so for three pound in 15 is not too bad so yeah so sold those three and I also sold another one but it's boxed and he's called Will and he's from um, the Stranger Things now I've never watched the series but I believe was it on Netflix I think um, so yeah and this one's boxed as well um, again, I paid £2 for this one um, and I sold him for 14 So you can sell them for quite a bit of money. They still are collectible. So yeah, so if you go past them, pick them up. So my next item, I think I saw, showed this in a few videos ago when I picked this up in um, Manchester when I went to Macclesfield. So this is absolutely beautiful. This is known as like a 1920s um, a flapper um, bag. So these bags were 1920s to 1930s. Um, it's still got the original tissue paper in it. Um, and it's got the label that says made in France. So you can just see it there, made in France. Um, a beautiful bag, absolutely beautiful. Um, I love it. I love bags as it is. Just look at the intricate of that on there. I mean, I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, it even looks like it's all been done by hand, if I was honest. So yeah, so this is a little vintage bag. Um, very dainty. Um, purses were decorated to match beautiful dresses as well. So this would have been actually matched to a dress probably at some point. Um, it was too small to carry makeup in and stuff. I mean, they just probably carried some money in it and some cigarettes maybe and things like that. But I actually don't think this one has ever been used. Um, it might have been people sometimes like use them and then they just put the tissue paper back in them to keep their actual shape. As you can see, it's really clean inside. So I'd be very surprised if it has been used. But what a thought eh, about you know, some of the 1920s using a bag like this. So yeah, so I bought this for, I think, I don't remember much, how much I paid for it. I did pay up for it though, this one. I think it was like £10. I wouldn't be an offer for me for 35 which I took. So it's not bad. So yeah, so um, that's a really good price for a little bag, I think. So that'll be on its way to, I believe somebody in London bought it actually. So yeah. So I bought this little jigsaw, it's Bing, everyone knows Bing, obviously my children are way too old now for me to actually remember this, um, because obviously you know my children were a lot older when this was on, and I think it's still on now actually. So this is like an educational puzzle, um, 
I do pick these up and the reason I pick them up is because um, you know they don't cost a lot of money and they don't really command a lot of money but I just like I can't bear the thought of you know maybe nobody buying it in a charity shop and then just getting put to recycling and I can't bear that so I always pick them up because I'd like to know that a little one is actually going to have pleasure out of this um, you know and learn because that's what it's all about with our children is learning and education so yeah so that's what I do um, it didn't come out a lot of money I paid a pound for it it sold for four but um, all my 99p auctions that I start off 99p I always put in a pot now this is completely random I know but because for Christmas every year and I've done it every year since I started eBay which is a long time ago I have a little pot let me show you so I have a little pot here as you can see um, it's just been an old memory jar but I've actually started using it as like I see quite a lot of pound coins in there as well so every time every time I sell a 99p item I put a pound in my jar and then at Christmas 2022 um, I get it and obviously I either buy stock with it before Christmas so that I've got some you know extra money for the stock um, or sometimes I just buy some Christmas presents it's just a way of saving um, I don't tend to like use like Christmas clubs or anything like that although I know some people do which is great um, I did actually when I was younger um, and my kids were younger I think I used Park once for the Christmas hamper but then when, when it actually came it was so big you really just couldn't get through it at all anyway and I, I hate the fact that there's a waste of food so I just literally do that so every 99p auction that I sell from from 99p I put 19 I put a pound in the little pot so I think I've got about well I started from January didn't I so I've got probably about 20 or 30 items so I think I've got about 30 pound 40 pound in there maybe already so it all adds up so when you think to yourself oh it's just a 99p item um, well actually even if it sells for four pound you still made three pound profit and actually you've still got a pound in there anyway so you're still saving it up anyway in, in a different way and also um i get a lot of feedback as well from people with a 99p item you know what i mean so again that's another thing to think about as well that you get feedback as well so if you get feedback from somebody that's worth it isn't it so yeah so i just purchase jigsaws all the time got loads upstairs as well to put on yet and i haven't done those yet but i will do and um yeah i just love the fact of thinking that of the pleasure of a, of a little person um enjoying that <laughs> so my last items are i'll leave the clothing till last because it's hanging up but i'll just go through these three so these three were silver items that i picked up in a job lot um in what i do is um when i go to auctions um i tend to um bid for like the boxes so you can get like job lot boxes so you can get like some jewellery in there, vintage jewellery, costume jewellery, a lot of it. Um, but other bits as well. And these are just at the bottom. So, um, And I have actually picked up quite a lot like this um, by doing these job lock boxes. So they are definitely worth looking out for. Um, if you don't have an auction house near you, there is a, um, an actual um, place called salesroom.com. And if you go on there, it actually does all the auctions for over the country. And... You can find out where your nearest auction is um, and also some auctions will um, send it to you for a fee so like on online auctions so that's really good as well um, and I pick up a lot of my items from these places as well so um, it's really good a good tool as well so it's um, the salesroom.com so I um, found these defense medals now defense medals were um, uh, a medal awarded to British and Commonwealth soldiers and civilians who served in the Second World War. Um, so, yeah, so that's really good, you know, um, that you've got these medals. 
and um, this one is i believe george the sixth on him there can you see him on there so yeah so he's george the sixth and then you've got the 1939 19 well you can see that 49 there so yeah so they were all the medals and there's a couple of different ones as well so this one here for instance is a picture of him like that and then on the back it's the two lions so i sold these all to the same person um i put them on two lots so i put so i've got five so i put three on one two on the other um i started them off sort of like because as i say they don't they usually have ribbons in them so they usually have a ribbon there, you know, where they would wear them. Um, unfortunately, the ribbons were missing. They were just in here. They're just in a little box, really. We'll put five of them together. Um, but I put them on because I thought, well, you know, might as well try it. Um, so, yeah, so that was good. So, anyway, so, yeah, so with medals as well is that you can get all different sort of medals. Um, but these are definitely the World War Two uh, medals. Um, it's quite nostalgic for me as well because my great grandfather, um, he was a bomb disposer in the war, um, and he was a captain. And um, yeah, it just makes me really like fond memories of all the people that put their lives on the line for us um, in those days. Um, you know, who fought for our country because our country wouldn't be here today if obviously these people, fortunately, lost their lives as well. So. I do really have like sentimental um, sort of things about these and obviously I'm glad they're going to somebody who's going to love them as much as I would if I was actually keeping them. <laughs> so these ones sold for 25 and now it didn't seem a lot but as I said there's no actual um, ribbons with them um, and these sold for 20 but the whole job lot box cost me, it's cost me in the auction and it cost me like £20. So, you know, I've kind of made my money back anyway, just from these. So, and I've got loads of jewellery upstairs I haven't even showed you yet either from that box. So, yeah, so, you know, profit straight away, which is good. Because um, that's what's all about, isn't it, reselling? So, yeah. So, those will be on their way to that guy. And I combined his postage as well because he asked me to. So I'll always combine postage for people when I can, when they bought two, two bids. So yeah, so that was great. So the next thing that I sold were these. So these are all silver hat pins. I believe they're silver. Um, like 1950s, 1960s. Um, and I think this one is a 1961 as well. This one could be like 1940s actually, um, because they've got the twist. If you see the little twist bit here, that actually means it's slightly older with the twist bit in it. So yeah, so I think that might be slightly older. It is look like a, a souvenir one. I think it's like a, a, a kiwi on it. So yeah, so that's um, a slightly older one. And then we've got obviously these are older ones so we've got these are quite common these ones you'll find them all the time usually in charity shops um little hat pins if you do pick them up pick them up because they do people do want them and um, they don't command great money but um they're just lovely aren't they to have people collect them and some can actually command quite a bit of money it just depends what you're looking for and if you know what you're looking for it's always a good thing so this one obviously is um, an early one. This one here, now I believe it might be some sort of precious metal one. Because um, what they used to do, they used to do the ridges bit here. See the ridges where they do the actual gem bit? That kind of tells you that it's an older one. And if you look right at the back there, and again you've got the twist bit there. So yeah, so it's kind of an older one that is. It's probably like 1920s maybe, 1910. And then you've got this other one which is beautiful, which is like the tiny little cherries. 
with the gold bit there it's like a like a bunch of cherries in somebody's hair now again could be 1940s maybe that one uh, I don't think it's as old as this one but if you didn't know hat pins are um, sometimes used as well to defend themselves against men believe it or not <laughs> which is quite a thought isn't it um, but yeah um, they, that's what they used to use them for um, and there was a concern that there was quite a few of them being used by like suffragettes as weapons <laughs> so um, yeah they hat pins were tips were then covered um, so that they couldn't injure people so yeah bit of a fact for you there but yeah so so yeah so they were they were a nice little find um again in that box the uh job lock box um and these are lovely as well i think because they like they almost look like a scottish thistle so they could possibly be scottish silver maybe but they are they're scottish thistles they look like scottish thistles those ones you can kind of imagine them can't you in this like in a little Scottish bonnet, bless them. I love Scottish bonnets, they're really cute. <laughs> but yeah. So they're all going to somebody. Again, I didn't pay anything for them. And they went for like £5.50. But, you know, it's still a sale. So yeah. So I was really happy with those. So my next item, obviously that I sold, was the silver cigarette clay case. Now this is 1947 um, and the reason I can do that is because if you can, I don't know if you can see, but there's actually a hallmark, you probably can't see it in this light, but there's a hallmark there and there's a hallmark just there, you see it there? So um, obviously you can tell silver and the year of it, so how you do that is, for instance, this is by um, ES and Co, um, which were um, a maker, silver maker in Bond Street in London. Um, and then the next one is an anchor. So obviously, the anchor also it, it tells you where it actually was. So that's Birmingham for an anchor. Um, the lion tells you it's British silver. And then the W tells you the year. Um, there's a great website actually on the internet for doing silver markings if you actually go and go and look at it. I think it's the British Hallmark Silver dot com. Um but it's absolutely brilliant, so it tells you everything. Um as I say, lovely little thing. And what I always do is I weigh it. So I weighed it and it came to 227 grams, so that's 227 grams of silver. Uh, it's a solid silver case um as i say it came in my job lot um actual uh, box again in sort of like a shoe box i'd like some jewelry in it and then it had this like um underneath it so um, and at the time to be fair to you you know it's just like i've sold a few of these but never like as big as this one um so this one, um, I think I started at 45 and I did it on auction. So I started at 45 because I kind of looked at the prices um, when they sold comps on eBay. Um, and it sold for £117. So, and it's even got a few marks on it as well. So I didn't actually think it was going to go for that much, if I was honest, because there's a few marks there. But unfortunately, they're age related marks that you can't really do anything about. Um, so, yeah, so £117 to. A person in London so this will be going in to them today obviously I'll send it signed first class signed um, yeah and I hope they get some enjoyment from it so it's a lovely little thing actually I suppose like in those days you know you smoked a lot didn't they so yeah yeah and so um, obviously Cigarette cases were actually used um, because, you know, they were like obviously the paper packets in those days and it stopped the cigarettes from getting crushed. And for my very last one, which I was completely floored by, I have to say, was this little diamond, which is an officer's. Now, I thought it was a sweetheart badge. 
but it's a badge cap apparently and it's an officer's one um it's a silver you can tell by it's silver because of the hallmark there um the way it's made as well it's quite rough at the back so it looks like it obviously you know was made um it's um really really uh, nice the intricate bit there can you see where the rope bits are hanging down as well so yeah so i had quite a few people messing me about this badge um one guy said to me that um actually it's 1930s and not 1940s which i thought was 1940s but apparently it's 1930s because of the um j so it's actually j than silver so i just thought to myself you know what if i was going to do this i would probably put it about maybe 45 pound for like buy it now so i thought well i'll just start off at 25 because i thought well you know even if i get like an offer of like 40 i thought well that's okay so i started off at 25 on an auction didn't think much about it um and it still stayed at 25 till the auction day there was just lots of watches on it and i was thinking okay i'd had some people message me as well because one guy wanted me to measure it so i measured it obviously um but it was it was the fact that this one was actually too big for his hat because he wanted one that's slightly smaller um so yeah so i measured it had quite a lot of interest people messed me about it um what silver was it um and the regiment obviously it's the oxfordshire and buckingham regiment light infantry regiment which was part of the british army um so yeah so um it was a lot of um, watches so just went on didn't think nothing about it obviously the cigarette case was going when went up to sort of like probably about 80 pounds and i thought blimey 80 pounds that's quite a lot and i thought well, if it sells for that that's great and then the next day i got up in the morning checked my bids again and it got up to like 100 and i was like oh my god so i thought it was the cigarette case to be fair that was going to one that was command the most money because this was only 25 pounds still on that day and then there was another bid for it uh, about maybe three four hours beforehand it went up to 40 and i thought oh well, 40 well that's that's what i was going to do anyway from a buy it now so perspective so i just thought okay fair enough and then um I looked at it again, I looked at it again, it just kept going up and up and up. I could, and about, about probably at least 10 minutes, actually 10 minutes that was left on it, it just kept, I kept hearing this ping, ping, ping all the time. Um, and I think I saw it like about 80 pounds or something. I thought, well, that's really good. And then I actually clicked on it and it held for 206 pounds. 206 pounds. I was like, oh my God. You know a little silver badge for military but yeah somebody wanted it so that's going to actually overseas so it's going to be go by um gsp and then they paid for it straight away <laughs> literally straight away so yeah so that's going over to G by gsp um today i don't know where it's going over to actually i'd like to try and find out where it's going over to but um i will parcel it and package it and put it very precious as well so I just hope that it gets to its owner in one piece because I love sending them over to GSP but when they're such like items like this that have like you know um paid quite a lot of money for I'm thinking oh my god yeah just make sure it gets in one piece so yeah so that's going to go over today so guys that's what I sold over the weekend um hope you enjoyed my video right guys so this is the actual um jacket that I sold um, it's a vintage jacket, 1970s. It's by a company called Brightwear. Um, yeah, and it's in really good condition for its age. So um, I bought it for five pound and sold it for twenty. So yeah, as I say, bread and butter item again. But you know, I think I did pretty well over the weekend. So yeah, so that was great. So yeah, so that's all my pickups and obviously uh, what I sold. Um, I hope you like both videos. Going to be, there's two videos obviously this week. Um, I thought I'd do um, what I sold video um, because yeah, um, I'm sort of, sort of like really enjoy doing the videos now. Hope you guys are enjoying watching them and the content. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, or uh, hit that notification bell, guys. Um, that would be brilliant. And as I say. 
my uh, live is at uh, between sort of quarter past nine and nine thirty. It depends when Nick and Andrew finish. Um, so uh, yeah, but I'll be on this Sunday. Um, and also, I'm going to be starting to do a new little thing on the Sunday, um, where I would like one of you guys. You don't have to show your face. You could just literally just show the figure. Um, if anyone's got any figures at all, um, who would like to show them on my live, um, and we can find out about them on live as well, um, to help you make maximum profit for your items if you want to sell them, or if you just want to know what they command price-wise as you maybe collect them, um, just um, give me a message on my Instagram. Okay guys, take care, bye for now.